<laughs> Welcome to episode 12, Dr. Peter Flynn. I am very excited to be here. I'm also very unexcited to be here, but for two completely different reasons, as we'll go into shortly. But uh, I'm very, very excited to hear and uh, maybe how you're going through NFTs as well as everything else. Uh, and I'm fingers crossed, I haven't actually looked, I didn't want to look at your NFT before I went into today because I feel like it would make me a little bit depressed. But I'd love to know how you're going on that scene. And I hope it's a little bit better than I've been going over the past week. So, and for, for those of you tuning in and have been long-time listeners, you'll notice that we are not diving straight into the total today. That will be revealed at the end. Do not skip ahead. <laughs> uh, you should have, it could be anywhere throughout the could video, be, and I don't want to give it away. It will not be not, at the end. Not usually at the end. <laughs> um, but basically, the two things I've been focused on is crypto NFT world and Etsy. Now, Etsy doesn't like me. Shut the account down. I've appealed. We haven't heard back from him. Uh, on the down low, uh, we're probably going to try and go incognito and reopen uh, with nothing traceable back to the original account. Um, on the non-down low, we're definitely nef- never starting an Etsy store again. Etsy, if you're watching this. Etsy, <laughs> if you're watching this. Uh, we will give them another couple of days to get back to us to cooperate. Otherwise, we have to bring out the big guns. Hmm. and uh, put on the fake mustaches and go again. <laughs> um, with, uh, with expectations that they could possibly shut us down again. So although that was, I was super excited about it, it was going to, it was going to be super profitable, um, a little bit disappointing, but honestly, we will take it as happening for a reason and we'll, we'll pivot and adjust, uh, whether that's on those digital journals in a different way or if it's just putting that um, attention and energy somewhere else. Uh, on the other thing, NFTs and crypto, basically we've got a challenge from 30K to a million. Or four, now it's about, or well, how much do we have? Somewhere around 60 to 70K to a, um, to a million. And how do you do that in today's world, 2021, it's September. The easiest way to do that, or the quickest way to do that, that most people are getting rich right now is in the crypto world and the NFT world. I'm relatively new to it. I, I bought crypto in 2017 in that in that boom and then left it for a few years and then came back earlier this year. So I'm sort of like a three out of 10 on the education level, but I've dove or dived really deeply over the last three weeks. It's basically been quite consuming. I dream about it, gone, tried to learn solid, solidity um, and basically just researching anyone who I think that I knows what they're talking about, which is sort of the hard bit at the moment. There's no real resources out there. It's not like how to rank number one on Google. And then like you have actual resources. Everyone is just speculating at the moment. So it's hard to find people with track records. Um, but basically I'm, I've cast the web really wide and been filtering through who I think is legit over the last three weeks. And the thing about this space with gaming, with DeFi, with NFTs, with launch pads, it's so vast that you can't tackle the entire, it's like trying to tackle the entire world of the internet. It's like, oh yeah, I'm learning the internet. And it's like, yeah, but you have to do e-com. And then in e-com, you need to do a niche. Um, you know, even Amazon, who basically run e-com, which is a small part of the internet, uh, started with books. And it's like, I need to start somewhere. And the best place that I've started already is NFTs. Um, and then the best use case for NFTs is obviously uh, gaming. And there's a lot of crypto gaming going around and I've dived deep into crypto gaming for the last two weeks um, and NFTs. And so I'm definitely like 10 times more educated than I was, but I can still feel like how vast this world is. Uh, So I have a lot to go. Um, I will share my screen and just touch on a couple of things. First thing is I have uh, subscribed to this um, software. It's called Nansen.ai. And the guy who runs it is definitely very inspired by Elon Musk. He's just a quirky uh, dude on Twitter who's a coder and he is big into the blockchain and NFT world. But basically because crypto and NFTs and blockchain is all decentralized and transparent, the, the ledger of it is actually transparent. He pulls all that data and then sorts it. So I won't go into everything in here. Um, some fun takeaways is like basically he tracks the wallet that the wallets that hold the coins that appreciate the most and then sees what new coins they're buying. Um, There's um, NFT Paradise, which is where I spend most of my time 
I believe it's NFT Paradise, um, where basically it gives you a whole overview of the NFT space instead of trying to sort through OpenSea or um, something, whatever the bit, what was the other one? Nifty Gateway or something like that, where they have like the upcoming um, NFT NFTs. This sorts it with actual data. Um, so one thing I've been doing is sorting by the most recent contract dates, which is the newest NFT collections, and then having a look at what volume is actually starting to take off. So this is an Ethereum. And you can see, and this is what you could manually see before, is like 99% of these projects just flopped. But you can't tell that from an external level. All the art looks similar, or they're all PFPs. Uh, and basically, you can't distinguish between one another. What, with this data, not only can you sort by new upcoming projects, you can actually sort by ones that have started to move. Now, I'll find one that I think is actually decent because it goes a little bit deeper. And this, I think there's like 150 bucks a month for the pro version. And then it, it goes up to $2,500 a month if you want to get in those exclusive discords and stuff, which I'm not against because I do think there's some real whales in those discords who know what they're talking about. And the more I, I dive into this market, the the more I really feel it is a network and a who you know sort of thing because the projects don't inherently take off because they're better. They take off because they have a better community. And so it's like, it's almost like the right people and in the right projects are going to make it take off. Um, so I can't find anything here. So let's just go back to one and see this. So you can see these two here, OnChain Monkey and Psycho Teddy. These are the ones that have had some ETH uh, move through it. So you take this over to another one of their tools. And again, I'm very primitive at this tool at the moment, but I really want to get uh, much better at it. And it's going to break down its price over time. The biggest thing that I love is this here. Now, this doesn't look as um, intriguing as a project that I would like to get into, but basically they have this thing called notable buyers. Now, these are people with really high value NFTs, such as curio cards <laughs> or um, punks or um, something like Board Ape Your Club, if they're holding these in their wallet, they get a yellow dot. Or if they have a million, or get this, a billion dollars of value. Do you know how many billion uh, dollar wallets there are? I don't know. I, I wish I actually knew that total. I'd love to get that. <laughs> I think you that. knew. I was like, this is amazing. No, but because, like, because it is decentralized and so transparent, everyone knows there's billionaires out there with like billion dollar investment funds and stuff. But actually coming across a real wallet with a billion dollars is not as uncommon as you think in this world. And there's literally like, it shows you how many, it might actually be in here, how many billionaire wallets actually in uh, billionaire holders here. So there's none in this one. But every like project I go into, it's just like, oh yeah, there's six billionaire holders in this one. I'm like, sorry, six people with a billion dollar assets in their wallet are in this one. Me and my brother actually literally had to go and define what they meant by billionaire holders because we didn't believe that they were just three, four, six billionaires sitting in, in the same projects as we were. Um, but it has notable buyers in here. And basically you can track these wallets and see what the smart money and the notable buyers and people who have a good um, historic track record are actually getting into new. So I've been trying to learn this tool, which has been very helpful. And what you'll find is there's always a lot of notable buyers sitting in this bottom left-hand corner, way below like the floor price because they get into these pre-sales and these communities, which all operate on Discord. So I'll be going deep into that. Um, I don't have any investments that I've actually made within this challenge from this tool yet because I still feel like I'm not as educated as I'd like to be. I've been playing around with a little bit of money just to test some stuff. Um, a couple gone up, a couple broke even. Uh, we had one loss today. Um, but I'm not confident in my ability to actually make money consistently on this um, yet. Uh, but I do feel like I'm getting a feel for the market um, and just like an intuitive understanding, which is great. Um, and then the only other thing that I've got coming up because I'm very passionate, like I really do enjoy this um, side of the internet. It's definitely like the use cases in the future is just, going to be unreal and i feel like i'm just we all or anyone watching this is so early in this actual event it's like the internet in the mid to late 90s or it's like getting on instagram in 2013 or something it's just like cool if you, we can just be consistent and understand and get educated this the money is going to flow to the top because this is the most purest meritocracy we have um so i've narrowed it down to these guys one two three four five six seven people and what I want to do, and I can actually um, create reports here for everyone to read, 
I want to go and spend basically a week on each person and track every single move they've made. Every Some of them put out actual content on this sort of stuff. Go and watch every single one of their YouTube videos just on two times speed and make a really concise sort of like uh, one of these IPO datas or the Etsy products, just an Excel sheet of all of basically what they've taught and anything they've invested in uh, and links to things like their wallet so I can track new purchases that they're actually minting uh, and stuff like that. So my focus at the moment is still education. The only other investment I've actually made is I've just popped in those Gary V tokens that I was talking about at the end of the last episode, buying his book. Um, I put $2,000 uh, towards that in this, but they, they don't come out until um, mid to late November. So that's still a couple of months, which is like, if I put $2,000 somewhere else in the NFT world, maybe I could start getting some appreciation on it, but I've still got a little bit of extra cash to play with. But that concludes my last week and or last week or two. That's exciting. Um, I noticed in the software you were using there, it called itself NFT God Mode. And I bloody love that. That was brilliant. It's great. NFT God Mode. <laughs> The guy who writes it, he's, he reminds me of Elon Musk and he puts yeah. a lot of jokes on Twitter. He's very smart, um, quite nerdy, but charismatic at the same time. He does podcast interviews. I might grab, get him on maybe this podcast or, or my other podcast um, and start to like get that network and that understanding. But uh, I, I love the names of his products there. Fantastic. <laughs> so good. Well, I'm going to share a screen and go through what I've been working on or continue to work on. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with this one, actually. So if you can see my screen, and this was two hours ago, another 1 million Moderna COVID-19 vaccine doses coming to Australia after EU deal. So ScoMo has been doing, doing his homework and after getting caught going back to Sydney for Father's Day when he told the rest of Australia that they can't go to Sydney. He thought he'd probably better do something uh, to save face. And what he's done to save face is fantastic because it's going to be brilliant for the stock market, I believe, when it opens tomorrow, because what that means for a lot of people is that it's going to bring forward the sort of mRNA vaccines they can have. And so they can reduce the time between first and second doses, which means the time to be hitting essentially like 70 and then 80% of the population vaccinated and things opening up more is going to shorten and shorten. Mm. And what we've seen is consistently they've found another million, another four million, another million. I really imagine the people are going to start in the stock market getting more comfortable at the moment going, this day it's actually going to keep creeping forwards and forwards and forwards because we're getting more and more. And they're just, they're especially coming up because it's, it's almost election time, right? And what happens around like election time? Fantastic things happen that we never thought could happen because, ah, oh, I don't know. It's election time and we want some votes. So I do believe there's going to be a massive concerted effort now by the Liberal government and ScoMo in particular to convince people that he's done the right thing, especially around the vaccines. And we know they may have not had the best start of the vaccine rollout and it wasn't a race at the time and then everyone went to lockdown and suddenly it's a race. I think we're going to come to the tail end of this and we're going to find another million next week and then another million and then another million doses. And I reckon probably by by the start of November, we'll be 70 to 80% vaccinated because they've just kept accelerating this through yeah. uh, and we'll keep seeing more and more reports like this. So I'm very excited. And that leads me into my stock tips here. My not stock, not stock tips, by the way. My <laughs> stock uh, uh, tips truth comes out. Uh, the truth comes out. It is financial advice. I knew it. I knew it. Those greens say otherwise, bro. Oh, oh good. Let me just, sorry. There we go. Um, <laughs> oh, good. But let's start with Tyro. So Tyro is uniquely positioned uh, for when we come out of lockdown. Like I said last time, they get about 27, 28,000 more terminals at the moment. They're making more money than ever again and again. And last week, if you remember, I talked about all three of these stocks were really well positioned to do better, uh, especially because of what was happening. We're accelerating out. New South Wales had made the announcement. All these things are coming together. And that happened after the stock market closed last week. And this week, we've had another reasonably large announcement. So I expect coming into this week and coming to the end of the week too, we're going to continue to see these things improve. I, I imagine Tyro is going to continue to go up. They've also joined the ASX 200. 
uh, which has boosted their share price up. I think, I can't remember what we were last time, but we're sitting at $4.05. I think we're like which, $3.90. It was, yeah, it was, I, I think it was three seventy eight when I uh, plugged wow. it all in. So I think we've had like a, almost a 10% week for Tyro, which has been fantastic. Uh, Webjet, $6.02. So they've done really well. Center Group has gone down throughout the week, but I imagine it's going to continue to rise and rise and rise over the coming weeks. But to be sitting 16.71% up for Tyro, 23.87% up for Webjet, and 14.11% up for Westfield, I'm pretty bloody happy with that, especially when we go across and compare that to our dashboard here and look at, what is it, 2.53% for the S&P 500. So things are moving in the right direction, moving and shaking here. Yeah, bro, so the S&P going, had a rough week. Did you see oh, that? the S&P has had a very rough week. Yeah. Um, do you know why that is? Did you search into that at all and, and see why not. it was having a little bit of a downtrend? I looked at I looked why Apple crashed, which was a whole different story, but why did the S&P crash? Actually, while I, while I pull up a story, can you uh, explain the Apple? Apple crashed. It went from $1.55, I think, down to $1.48. had about a 2%, almost a 2% loss in a day. And I was like, God, some, some bad news have had to have come out. And it was basically that they lost a, I don't know if my mic's too far away. It's basically they lost a decision in court against, um, I think the founders of Fortnite who got their app taken off the store because they tried to bill their players directly without giving Apple 30%. And the court actually ruled in Fortnite's and other apps favors that if you have an app on the app store, you can act, you should be able to, um, bill your players directly without cutting Apple in 30% in the in-game purchases or uh, give them another link where they can actually purchase from, which on that news, 2% drop, which I thought was pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy, actually. That's a, that's a big, big deal for Apple. It is a big deal. They're fighting it um, and also the way they implement it, and I won't go into detail here, but I know we've we're, we're spoken about the Facebook mm. retargeting uh, needing permission. I downloaded Instagram today on my phone to shoot a video and uh, the way they asked for permission to retarget was so funny. They're basically like help support small businesses, help personalize ads to your own needs and all this stuff. And it had like hearts and it looked really fun. And all you had to push was continue. And I'm like, I would not have, if I didn't know what was going on, I would have just been, I don't know what that is. That looks fun. Continue. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Apple will be the same. By the way, so you thing. didn't support small businesses? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Did not support small businesses. Um, I am a Grinch when it comes to businesses. Uh, <laughs> all right. I didn't, know, so I didn't know who I was shooting this with until now. It was so funny. Oh. But I'd like, to, I'd like to jump into this quickly because when it started going down, I, I dive real deep into like what's going on in the world at the moment because that's how I, that's how I judge the world news. Um, and I know a lot of it's relatively meaningless. Um, probably most of it is relatively meaningless. <laughs> Typically, whenever the S&P 500 goes up or down, you can go, oh, something's happening in the world. Let's go suss what's happening. Mm. But this was a really interesting one. And I don't think it's going to make a big difference. And I think we'll get through through this and everyone will be like, oh, that was actually nothing in the end of it, like, you know, 2000 and all those other things that didn't really matter. <laughs> but the federal government is on track, the US federal government, to default on the national debt somewhere, somewhere in between the middle of October and the middle of November cool. without action to raise the debt ceiling. And at the moment, the Republicans are saying that we will not raise the debt ceiling. And they're putting a hard line in saying, no, we're going to default on our debt. We do not want to raise the debt ceiling. So it's warned the potential slowdown and a deepening, deepening uncertainty driven by rising COVID-19 cases could shift that window even sooner, bringing the US closer to an unprecedented default on the national debt for the first time and being downgraded in their credit rating. Whoa. So that's national debt. So with themselves. So it's essentially the debt. Now, I don't know exactly where, where their debt comes from. I, I imagine they've got debt to many, many different institutions and, and banks and central banks, et cetera. But essentially, it's the re Republicans playing hardball. And I, I imagine at some point, they're all going to go, oh, you know what? We can actually get through this and work together because yeah. you know, America and all that. But realistically, like this is it's reasonably big news if America was going to default on its debt for the first time in its history. And that's one of the reasons they think there's a bit of fear around 
uh, the S&P 500. And we all know that fear, we don't all know, most people know that fear is a good thing to buy. And if we think of ourselves like that clown from the movie It that feeds on fear, if you, if you can be the clown in the stock market and feed on fear and buy fear, then you're going to be very, very wealthy one day. So I'm excited and I'm sitting here. Ourselves. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, hmm, what can we invest in coming up? I was thinking we should we should rename ourselves to the stock market clowns. The stock market clowns. I, <laughs> I like that. I like but that a lot. What's also funny is uh, I should probably be up to date with this information because the biggest play that I'm actually in at the moment is the US dollar. <laughs> 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 oh, I has tailwind. the US dollar changed much over the past week and a half since this has become a it, it weirdly hasn't because I kept an eye on that much. Um, but still at $1.36, I believe. To the Australian dollar, um, which is still a little bit down since I took the gamble, but um, you know, it's all right with a headwind. It makes my leg muscles stronger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing how this plays out. Hmm. But that's the main excitement for me this week. If I maybe jump back in, I'll just share screen on this bad boy. Can I a little reveal. I forgot to go over the depressing part of my investing because I was like, oh, look at all this great stuff that's happening. And then Stacking if we can come down here, beans. I have three NFTs. I got Bitcoin keys, painting and nuts, Queen. which have gone down in value. So in total, 21,000. Now, I believe it was about 30 something thousand worth uh, when I first bought them. So down to 21,000 mm-hmm. worth. And if we do a little bit of a reveal and come across here, I'm just going to change this one to be black. And I'm just going to pull these down. You can see I've had a pretty drastic drop this week of $6,605.14. So I'm down to 38764 However, I'm still 29.22% up on my investments from when we started. And when we compare that to the S&P 500, 2.53%, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with how these things are tracking along. I'm really happy that if we're looking at the stocks here, the stocks are really moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And I'm really keen on seeing what happens here, especially when we come to the end of the month when Christie's auctions off the full set. I imagine they're going to get more airtime, more mainstream, and we might see another big peak. And I'd like to create some more liquidity here. So I think I'm going to sell one of them at a peak when that happens. Mm. I'd like to hold probably be two of them because I think it's going to continue to rise over time. But I yep. think I'd like to sell one to give me some more liquidity because at the moment I have zero liquidity in this challenge. I literally yeah. am just like, everything's everything's in there. I have zero dollars in cash. AK is much. all I got. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'd like to, to be able to explore a few more things. But at this stage, I'm holding and I'm waiting for some something to give me a sign that's the right time to make a move. I like it. I like it. See, that's um, it's also not a bad play because that for those of you who don't know, these three are in the Curio card set, which is also a good hedge because if we rise, we rise together. Mm. So, so I will, uh, I'll pass the microphone back to you and thank you. the metaphorical uh, microphone. <laughs> Sing star. <laughs> How good. Can you yeah, stop the screenshot? I'll share mine. Actually, we um, should get Sing star. We should do a sync oh, type. That would be amazing. Now <laughs> I am also in the red this week, down to sixty-five-five. Uh, now it's not a it's not a week for NFTs, and I would say the NFT market is maturing in the sense that it's getting slower. There's a lot less buyers out there, um, and it's in a downward sort of wave. Uh, now I haven't sold because I believe it's in a long term up wave, especially for the things that Pete and I hold, which have historic value. Um, which is the first ever NFTs minted to Ethereum blockchain. Now, also Ethereum is not looking too healthy for NFTs just because their gas fees are ridiculous. And we saw things like Solana absolutely crush this week because you don't have to pay that much gas. Um, so it just makes sense that that Ethereum probably won't be the future long, long term of NFTs unless they're going to move it to the second layer of their chain or something like that, which would help. So I'd like to hedge my bets a little bit, um, but you can always still wrap things, which means you can port them from one blockchain to another, meaning we can port our Curio cards onto whatever blockchain makes it and they could still be the original um, cards, 
the, the first ever art minted to the blockchain. Um, mm. And the other thing on that is I do believe you can see a couple of sad snouts coming down. Uh, I do believe they are going to turn around. People like to sell the news. As soon as Christie's news was out, people sold. I was in a, um, in a drop today and I'm like, I know they're going to go down. As soon as the reveal comes of wh what you're actually holding goes down. I'm learning the market a lot better. So I think I'll be able to predict these peaks and mm. do a little bit of arb, uh, arbitrage, which is basically, oh, if it's at a peak, sell it and watch it drop 40, 50% as they do in NFT world buy back in and literally have, uh, well, I mean, what's this? $20,000 extra liquid if you could time it perfectly. Um, so would you, interested, would you be buying another NFT right now, at, you know, in the My Curio cards? I would if I had more liquidity. Um, but they are a long-term hold. Um, I mean, in a year from now, I have no doubt they're going to be doing really well, but it could be a rough six to seven months. And if you have a look... Um, at the sort of trend that this Apple's making is sitting just above 28,000 at the moment. You can see it's spike, drop off, spike, drop off, spike, drop off. I, I predict this to continue. This is what uh, CryptoPunks looks like. And it's just like, it's just don't buy into that fear, especially like there's a lot of projects where it's like, get out if you can get out, it might be too late. But something like this um, it does have historic context. I mean, Christie's is auctioning it for a reason. So I'd obviously I'm betting on this. Um, but I would, I would pick up another a curio if I had more liquidity in the challenge, but there's also a lot of other stuff that I'm watching, including some gaming cryptos um, and a couple of DeFi cryptos that I've got my eyes on that I think I could get a pretty decent mm. 20, 30, maybe 40% return over the next week. Um, but I'm going to start just with my toe in the water because I'm not, <laughs> I could be so wrong, um, but I would like to, you know, mm. put a G there, a G there, sort of like I was doing with the IPOs and just test how it's going and, and test some theories because that's the whole point of this challenge. I like it. And just uh, to jump on the screen share, CryptoPunks, I, I was looking at them earlier today and saw this yeah. one. That someone, guy just sold, didn't he? Someone yep. bought this for 2.5 ETH three years ago yep. and they sold it for 2,000 ETH, which is 9 million Australian dollars. 9 million Australian, 6.6 million us it happened today um unreal crazy absolutely crazy unreal so and i think this is this is one of the reasons i'm looking at the long-term holds and the curio cards going they are going to be collectors well they are already collectors items yes but in three years time they're still going to be collectors items they're going to be the first on the ethereum blockchain and when you look at it and go Ethereum may not be, I guess, the future of NFTs, but it's going to be the history of NF NFTs. And that's what we're holding on to. I like that. I'm very poetic. Very, very poetic. Like that. And that could be, that could be the, uh, the title. <laughs> Potential title there. <laughs> yeah, you guys will see what we went with. Um, <laughs> you probably see it at the start. Bro, if you um, want to just a little more sneak peek of what's to come with NFTs, NFTs with like legit utility are very exciting to me. There's these NFTs out there that basically um, generate passive income for you because, and to put it as simple as possible, NFTs are basically communities and some of these communities have utility, some of them are collections, but there's always like a volume of trades going on uh, within these NFTs. Some of them had utility such as you get access to this gambling website that's up and running. Uh, and depending on the NFT you hold, the better your odds at the actual table are. And now there are these NFTs that are popping up that are the ones where you're actually earning a percentage of the gambling revenue. Like if you own this, it's a monkey bets, is it what it's called? If you own, own a certain monkey, you literally earn like one or 2% of the actual volume of the monkey selling and then the volume of the actual um, uh, casino bets, whatever the, the house edge is. And these are popping up in a lot of places. And that's what I mean. The NFT market is actually maturing just beyond a photo or a JPEG or a profile photo to actually being really exclusive clubs that if you hold something like a um, Board Ape Yacht Club, which is they got auctioned at um, Sotheby's and for $24 million last week, uh, if you hold one of those, you get airdrops 
which you can imagine airdrops is like the old school email, which is basically instead of sending mail, you're actually sending tokens to people, um, which is also a very good potential marketing method to send them tokens with marketing in it. Um, but we were holding a koala, me and my brother, and literally we got these koala plates dro dropped to us for free, which is worth $350. And we just sold it. We just made $350 because we held a koala in this koala community. And there's all these NFTs that are actually because they're so high profile, because they actually have really good utility, they're earning, like they're yielding a, a return on their investment like day to day. And I'm like, oh, that's such a fascinating thing to do. And um, there were these NFTs, I actually don't know too much about these ones, but apparently they brought in a minimum of 80K a year if you held one. And I'm like, well, I think they were going for like a million dollars or something, which makes sense. But it's like, you're just buying an essentially shares in a business. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like the way, <laughs> and I just put up the board board eight yacht club. Then I'm just like looking at it, going, like it fascinates me, like how the NFT itself. Like I look at crypto punks, I look at these, and it fascinates me. And I don't, I don't understand the utility yet because, like, besides the community, the yeah. like when you buy art, people put art somewhere, and they can display it, and it's it's a flex, right? Yep. People can see that they've got something that other people can't have, like. And I think we talked about this a bit last time. It's like, how do people flex with NFTs? Because I think when you can understand how that happens and how that works, maybe in the digital world going forwards, it's going to make more sense to me why people pay extreme amounts of money for these things. That's the, that's the thing I can't reconcile just yet, but I really want, besides the community, I'm starting to understand that. Yeah, I, can't say I, have, I don't know exactly where it's going because that definitely is in its nascent phase. But in terms of, displaying art like the mona lisa scene obviously it's in the louvre and millions of people say that a year but how many people see the the mona lisa on instagram or on youtube or on google images literally like hundreds of millions of people a year so already like even real world art is displayed more in the virtual world than it is actually in the real world and the only reason we know jay-z is a crypto punk is because he displays it on his twitter uh, and then there's these walkthrough galleries that are like VR style galleries, which are looking really cool. Um, but obviously what we don't have yet is a, is a, we have open sea, but we don't have like a, a central home. We have the central land, you have things like Axie, Lunasia, um, and like everyone's sort of like diversified and they display their art or their NFTs in like Treeverse is another one that you can display your actual artwork. But like, there's no Facebook. When Facebook came around, it's like, that's where you live online. That's your online profile. Now it's Instagram at the moment is like your online profile. And this is where you display your artwork or where you display your car or where you display it all. Um, but I do feel like there is going to be a massive revolution in terms of what is the metaverse that, we're, that most people are going to live in. Mm. I'm interested. I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah. Good man. All right. Well, I reckon that's pretty much it from me. Like I'm interested to know where you're going this week. What's on for you? Another deep dive. I'm just going to, it's basically the most educated are going to make the most money in the blockchain and crypto world uh, because there is no authority. It's all decentralized. And literally, if, you, if you're dumb, no one's sending your money back. If you send it to the wrong person, there's no PayPal to reverse your fees. I want to be as educated as possible. So I'm going to break down. Um, I'm not sharing screen, but I'm just going to check. I'm either going to go for Ilio Trades or Alex Becker or Journey Crypto, actually. These are people who I've been doing sort of like a little bit of research on. Um, but I want to like, I want to pierce their teachings and their understandings and sort of level up and start to build a little bit of a network so I can get added to these like exclusive Discord groups where everyone hangs out and actually creates these projects and cryptos and games and 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 stuff so i'll probably take one of those names and just go like cool i'm gonna watch 150 videos this week just on two to three x and just write down my notes i like it i like it a lot this week for me is going to be similar but gary v is the person that i'm going to be looking into yeah I'm looking for what's he saying um i'd really like to get my hands on one of his v friends Ooh. and so i want to think about using curio cards and the ones that i have is there a play that I can make looking at the friends and especially as we come up to possibly an opportunity to sell one or two of them that I could change that from being my curio cards to V friends, but still hold on to at least one, my curio card. So 
that's where my brain's going at the moment is how can I maybe diversify a bit because I'm all in my curio cards at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I do think they're going to do really well over the next month. And that's going to give me the opportunity to look at other opportunities. Uh, and the opportunity I'd like to look into is a V friend. Yep. And obviously learning more about Gary and essentially how is he going to continue to add more value into each of these? And that that's the biggest thing that I see and that I've learned from you is that it's you're not really investing in an NFT, you're investing in Gary V. And yeah. I think that's a pretty good investment. Very good. Yeah. Very good investment. They are pricey. Uh, he had he pumped them this month because he had two announcements. One was just the location of VCon, which is the admission to the event you get with your V friend. I'm like, why did you have to pump? Why did the price go from eight ETH to 18 ETH just because you were announcing the location of VCon? I didn't understand that, but it did. Um, and then he's got another announcement on the 13th, so in two days. Um, that is apparently it's going to be big. And the, pump, the price is pumped for that. I think you're going to see a little bit of a dump post the 13th just as people sell the news. So it could be a good time to get in. But, I mean, the floor... I'd go for an offer, but the floor will be well, it's 17 at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Which is what's that? 55k US. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but I, did, I, I, I do believe in it long term. He yeah. says he wants to he doesn't want to stop until each V friend is worth a million bucks. And I'm like, that's a big call, but I don't not believe you. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, that's uh that's hard to bet against right now. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We've got a lot more fun coming. This is our, this is our three month uh, check-in. Um, but I think the next three months are going to be even more exciting. Three months beating the S and P catch us. If you can. Just S and P. <laughs> our snouts will turn around this week. Yes. No, feel I'm feeling confident ish. <laughs> Excellent. Amazing. All right. All right. See you in the See next, next episode, time. my friends.